Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to build database project in Team Foundation Server 2013. Uh, there are a few things needs to be considered in order for us to do this successfully. Number one is the solution needs to be checked in. The database solution that you have created, it needs to be checked in in Team Foundation Server. Number two, all the prereq uh, for the Microsoft build needs to be installed. And I'll show you real quick that uh, what I mean by um, prerequisites needs to be installed on uh, build server so up here this is my um, right here is my uh, client server so I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick that what needs to be installed on your build server keep in mind this is my client server I only have Visual Studio here and Visual Studio is connected with my team foundation server so in order to for us to create a build on team foundation on build server you need to uh, you need to add all this you need to install all these things on build server there is a little bit of confusion um, I have seen that that uh, folks have installed all that on the client side and then you will get an error that um, uh, the SQL Server data tool uh, it cannot find in version uh, 11 or version 12 depends what uh, SQL Server database version you have uh, data tool version you have installed so keep in mind that these things needs to be installed on your build server not on your client so I wanted to quickly mention it before we get into actually building our uh, database project so here's my um, here's my Visual Studio I'm connected with my team foundation server and this is my database project right here everything if you look at it up here uh, everything is checked in so what we're going to do is create uh, create a build uh, auto build especially um, in this demo is going to be kind of manual build but we can al always um, you know choose an option whether uh, this uh, uh, particular build is going to be automated or not so in order to do that we're gonna go ahead and click on team explorer if you don't have team explorer open you can click on view and click on team explorer so we're gonna go in team explorer up here you will see uh, different options and we need to click on builds once it's loaded successfully what we need to do since we're going to do this uh, brand new this is our uh, first build so we're gonna go ahead and click new build definition and if you are not connected with the your build server is going to give you error at this moment so uh, up here there are a few options I'm going to close this so that we can see the options uh, build definition name you can change it if you would like to um, and uh, up here the options is enabled requests uh, and paused disabled uh, this is queue processing uh, if you wanted to do it um, you know automated you will see option right here but uh, these are the queue processing you need to read uh, queue processing and uh, whatever your requirement is you need to select the proper option according to that so up here is a trigger trigger is what will kick on your build so we got some options up here right now in this demo we're going to do it a manual um, that means the check ins do not trig uh, trigger a new build so you have uh, option continuous in integration uh, build each check-in so every time somebody will check in in your particular uh, as a database solution is going to run is going to trigger the build and the other is rolling builds uh, you can accumulate all the check-ins which is uh, um, I would say that it's um, it's a good option if you're working uh, all day and check-ins and check out and you wanted to build nightly or uh, up here you wanted to schedule it so you can do that as well so get a check-in accept check-ins only if the submitted changes merge and build successfully so you can uh, if if you have uh, this um, requirement you can up uh, select this option and if you wanted to schedule your build every night you can do that or every morning or uh, Saturday Sunday however you wanted to do that you can schedule your build next is our source setting this is our source setting it depends uh, up here it takes from your uh, uh, team foundation uh, check-in and your solution uh, project so it's gonna take it from there you can change it if it's uh, um, you know if you wanted to uh, put it in somewhere else your um, build source is your uh, uh, team 
project and uh, if you it will collect when you click on solution and click on the build it this gets it from team foundation server if there is a particular uh, project sub project uh, subfolder underneath your uh, team project is going to get it from there as well so next is our build default as you can see that uh, for this you need to select and build controller let's say that you have a uh, different build controllers keep in mind that you can have only one build controller per collection so if you are connected with a collection and there is a build controller assigned to that particular collection that's the only build controller you can use that if you if there are multiple uh, controllers that assign to that build uh, that particular collection you have an option to select that but um, uh, the staging location is whether you want it, your build output um, going on in the server or you wanted to uh, actually go ahead and uh, put it in some other uh, shared folder or you wanted to um, you know up here the build does not copy output files to drop folder at all so these are the three options I'm going to use the second option I have created a folder right here and I have shared that folder TFS build. If you right click on that, I have shared that folder. And this is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it right here. I want the build output right here. It makes it much easier if you give your client so that you can go ahead and look at it. But you have an option to put it in the server, which means that you need to be connected in order to look at your logs and uh, your um, uh, results and everything from the build. So uh, I'm going to do that uh, for some reason. If you click on that and right here, it's, it's, it's still is yellow right here is still warning so I'm usually what I do is like this so it goes away uh, just to make sure that it takes this particular path next is very important the process we're gonna go through uh, some options uh, first if uh, default option we're going to use in this particular demo the default template but if you wanted to since this is manual uh, build uh, we're gonna we're okay with the default template if you click on show detail we have three templates right now one is default template other is upgrade temp template and if you have a lab environment it, there is a template for that but uh, if you wanted to do uh, such as um, you know the the auto build auto deploy deploy to the target servers and and everything like that you we, we need to go ahead and get which i'll show it in my next video uh, that how do we how do we do build and auto deploy database projects so stay tuned for that uh, but uh, we'll, we'll have to basically um take this uh, particular default template and um, make changes in our uh, template and uh, uh, load that particular template so that we have uh, in our workflow that okay after successful build go ahead implement publish our project onto our target server and whatever the target server would be and again I'll show show it in my next video so right here is the template default template is okay up here we have some options TF version control as we selected in the beginning that uh, it's um, the the clean workspace is good after the build you know all the temp files and everything uh, gets um, you know cleaned uh, get version you can put it up here the parameter if you wanted to do a, a specific version for this particular build let's say that you have uh, uh, some check-in but uh, uh, your previous check-ins are not built and you wanted to do the previous uh, uh, version uh, in this particular build you can give that option up here you get that uh, uh, particular version and put it right here label source is true we wanted to put the label sources as well uh, up here the build this is going to be our uh, the project solution that is going to grab configuration if you wanted to do the build configuration this is the part that we're going to use uh, in our um, uh, next video we will um, uh, will configure it that so that it it'll, it it takes our uh, parameters of the build uh, rather than the default so uh, clean build is okay output solution is single if you click look at advanced right now advanced has 
perform code analysis auto and perform code analysis uh, um, sorry MS build platform auto and up here perform code analysis is as configured up here again uh, in our next video we're going to do um, MS build arguments if you wanted to have this build and automatically publish or deploy it you need to put in arguments here which I'll show you again in next video so there are uh, other good options if you wanted to run a post build script or uh, you know wanted to send an email or something a lot of good options in this particular build which we will uh, I'll show um, in different videos we'll use different uh, stuff like this in our uh, next coming videos so stay tuned right now I'm going to go ahead and just select it as it is uh, retention policy if you right here is a uh, retention policy if you wanted to keep the latest only you can uh, do that if you wanted to keep uh, the 10 lost build if you wanted to go ahead and go back and look at the you know previous bills you can do that and th these are the retention uh, policy of your build so we're gonna go ahead and save all this up here it says save all all right so our build is configured and is saved now we're going to go ahead and manually kick it kick our build so we're going to go ahead and team right here this is our tech brothers demo db we're going to go ahead and click and we're going to go ahead and say q new build so this is going to initiate the build process and we will watch it along the way that how it's doing so up here is the the queue you have the you can access the parameters I just showed you if you click on parameters you will see those options right here so you would have an option to change if any of that you would like to change um, right now in a manual build so general it's going to be the latest source that you have if you would like to have a latest source with shelf set you can do that too and uh, build controller this is the build controller it's gonna use priority in queue is one and this is our drop folder so we're gonna use this folder uh, after the build is successful if you would like to go back and look at the logs or activity of that particular build what it did uh, you're gonna uh, go into this particular folder and look at it so we're gonna go ahead and queue and it's gonna start processing up here it says 20 uh, it's just started so we're gonna go ahead right click and open so that we will see that what it does all right as you can see that um, our build is successful we got some warnings which you can take a look especially if you're doing it in production you need to look at these warnings but um, so far the main thing uh, to do our manual build is successful right here is the view log if you would like to do the view log if you want to open the drop folder that we just configured the shared folder you can take a look from there let's say that you have made after after this successful build you have made some changes you have created new tables and uh, you checked in those new tables and you wanted to rebuild that one good option is if you, if this um, build has already um, you know ran successfully you can click on particular this action and retry it and this is retry the build it will initiate another build for you again this is all manual uh, in my next video what we're going to do is uh, create a build process that will automatically build it and also it will uh, deploy uh, our solution to our target server so this is how you create the manual build of a database project I hope this video helps